you think this signifies to you a change in tactics and strategy in Gaza? It, it really changes with the, the scenario. It depends on the group that has them. Uh, as, as it's already been mentioned earlier, the, the fact that it's an unknown name group really doesn't mean a lot. It's, uh, they use that as a kind of to throw off the people that are behind the group trying to determine if it's uh, one of the factions. Now, again, be it Palestine, this could be a, an issue between Hamas, Hezbollah, or the PLO. But you've uh, been involved for many years in other situations. What's the goal for the kidnappers? Is it essentially and primarily political sympathy? Is it essentially and primarily uh, a platform? You know, you abduct journalists, suddenly everybody's talking about it. Is it essentially a shakedown? They just want money at the end of the day. It, it can be a combination of all those things. In, in most, in, in my experience in Iraq, we had again cases where numerous groups would grab an individual. There'd be an unnamed group that we weren't previously tracking. Uh, and they would have a public demand made that would say, release the prisoners from Abu Ghraib, or uh, the company or country has to pull out of you know, helping the reconstruction or helping in the multinational force Iraq. And that's a, that's a general. They make a public demand like that almost to generate a justifiable cause if there's somehow there's something noble or there's something um, you know that's that's worthy uh, to their cause to, to engender support throughout the Muslim world and that there's something you know that it's a freedom fighting tactic well the reality is it's behind the scenes but the real demands are really say what this group's about and in most cases it's about money it's what it comes to kidnapping is about extortion um, and it's either political extortion in that they want some concessions made or it's financial extortion. Um, generally, it's a combination of the two. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm curious to know what, what happens. I mean, in your experience, do people generally pay and they say we would never negotiate, we'd never pay, but they pay? Is that what happens? In many cases, it does, but the, the reality is this. And the, the individuals, the companies, the countries that did acquiesce and did make the concessions and did pay out the ransoms that were behind the scenes asked, they were, they were targeted again, again and again, and, and multiple instances where certain, certain companies and or countries made it known that they would pay, and they paid the substantial money, and it just drove the business. You know, the hardline position uh, about the, the, that the U.S. takes about no concessions, to be honest, it actually protects it protects Americans and same with the British position and the Australians they were locked step with with that no concessions policy and it and, it, and in fact it makes you safer because you're not future when you make it when you acquiesce to terrorism when you acquiesce to, acquiesce to these guys demand you embolden them to just go after you again and that's where it's a it's a very difficult difficult situation but again I, I, I know for a fact they're doing everything behind the scenes at the interagency level both worth you know the US government and the counterparts to, to work every angle and, and no 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 stone will be unturned to do everything to get these two journalists back that I can guarantee you